Hi there, it's Jerry from Amazing Grace Radio once again. This is the second time I've tried to record because I had some technical issues before. So thank you so much for listening. I have been inspired once again by Michael Basham to record my thoughts, whatever the Lord has laid on my heart to share. So I'm, I'm going to do that. So I feel like the Lord really wants to show us that uh, whether we live or whether we die, that we are in the Lord. So I know a lot of people are worried, anxious and nervous and fearful about these end days, especially uh, when we see things around the corner, around the horizon. Uh, a lot of people uh, are, such as myself, uh, deeply concerned about uh, the food shortages that uh, the enemy is causing through his cronies at the very top of the pyramid. Uh, so we know, or some of you know, that the, these food shortages are actually caused by the powers that be with them bombing different food factories and telling farmers to kill their uh, market-ready cattle, the market-ready pigs, the market-ready chickens. So they're creating the food shortage. But that the Bible actually says that there's going to be famine. So it just doesn't say who is creating the famines. But we know that, that famines are going to start here soon. Uh, some people are calling it uh, the meat apocalypse, and <laughs> they have been storing up uh, lots of food in, in freezers and, and canning foods and, and freeze drying foods. And, and there are some people that are really super pr- uh, prepped up. They've got roomfuls storehouses full even of food and that's awesome and amazing especially because um, when we think of Joseph and what the Lord showed him about the the Pharaoh's dreams that he had uh, seven years of there were seven years of fat cows and they were abundant and plentiful and then there were seven years of, of skinny gaunt cows that ate up the seven fat cows and so the the Lord showed Joseph that that he should store up seven years of grain um, for the seven years of drought. And so that's kind of what he's, I think, showing us people. I think that, that God is really showing us that, that we should uh, not hoard, of course. We should share our food with the poor and the, the less fortunate, but but we, we should be wise and to, to store up uh, food that's non-perishable. Um, There's so many different online stores that are uh, food preppers uh, that that will sell you, you know, bulk foods, you know, that are uh, not perishable, that don't re- will require refrigeration, that are MREs that just require water or just heat or what have you. Uh, so uh, a lot of people are concerned about the food shortages coming up. A lot of people are concerned that the New World Order wants us to eat bugs, like what's-his-face uh, in the the World Economic Forum saying, eat the bugs, which is totally disgusting. Uh, and I know that some people do, but I'm sure they don't love it or like it. <laughs> I can't imagine. So the enemy's people uh, at the top are looking at the Bible and, and saying, how can we curse uh, their enemies? people basically they they see our god they see yahweh they see jesus as as the enemy and they want to curse you know the people that love yahweh uh, they want they want us they to be cursed basically but you know um we god will always provide for us uh so so i don't believe that we're ever going to be put in a situation where Either we have to, you know, eat bugs or eat other people or die. <laughs> um, there's been different, you know, movies and shows uh, that seem to foretell cannibalism and eating insects and things like that to survive. And and they, they want us to suffer, you know, but, but we, we, we shouldn't focus on what the enemy's doing. Focus on God and God's promises that, that, that if we ask God to give us, you know, our daily bread. That's what he'll do. He'll give us our daily bread and he will, who will sustain us in the wilderness. If that's what it boils down to, uh, I don't believe that we are going to have to be forced to, to be cannibals. Uh, that's, that's what the enemy wants us to do. Uh, but you know, we're, that's why we pray thy will be done. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So is it God's will that you're forced to 
eat other people, eat other people's flesh? No, absolutely not. And so if you're thinking that this is crazy talk, um, so think about these different movies such as um, Soylent Green, uh, where it, it back in, I believe it was a 60s or 70s movie that it actually foretold that in the year 22, 2022, believe it or not, that, um, that, that Soylent Green, which was people, uh, would be served, you know, that we would be forced to, to eat each other. So anyway, so, so that's what the enemy wants to do, but we're not to focus on what the enemy wants to do, but we're focused on what God wants to do. But so on one hand, we're supposed to be circumspect and be wise as serpents, but on the other hand, we're supposed to be as innocent as doves. So we're supposed to be innocent and full of faith and trust in the father, uh, like a little child that he will provide for us our needs. And yet, on the other hand, we're supposed to be wise. Like, if you can, you know, when you go to the grocery store, uh, I know that, that my husband you know, isn't a fan of, of hoarding and storing a bunch of food because he partially doesn't believe that there's going to be a famine coming. So I have to, you know, buy a little extra food on the side, you know. And um, so if, if, if your wife or your husband is not really believing in the end times it, in terms of uh, an immediate famine or a famine around the corner, you might have to be a little subtle about it, you know, just buy a little extra food every time you go to the grocery store uh, because the farmers are told to kill their uh, market-ready cattle, their market-ready pigs, their market-ready chickens. Um, So they're creating the famine. So that's definitely not good news for sure. And um, this is one of the wildest things I've heard is that um, the end times are coming and they're here already. Uh, that's that's really uh, bothersome to a lot of people because we always thought that maybe the end times would occur after we pass away or if you believe in the rapture after we're raptured. So I never thought that I would see these times, you know, where we're uh, forced to, you know, take a jab that we don't want to uh, jab or job. I, n- I never thought that uh, these things would actually be concrete. You know, every, uh, you know, like the end times just seem to be to me, sort of nebulous, like far off in the future or, or after I pass away. But, but these, these end times are right at our doorstep. So what do we do? So don't be fearful. The Bible talks hundreds of times to not fear. So don't be fearful. Trust in Jesus um, about the, the, the food, the coming food shortage. You know, God will provide and also provide for yourself. So that's being, you know, innocent, but yet also wise. Um, and there, there's also other things that people are, you know, fearful of. And, you know, I, I have some friends that, that sometimes will, you know, we'll get together and we'll, we'll talk about our concerns about these end times, you know, about what's coming around the corner, um, such as how um, the New World Order is going to stop the production of oil. And that's going to have some uh, ramifications, worldwide ramifications, and of course inflation and, and what have you. But, but even if we're stripped of our job, car, home, whatever, uh, due to us not taking the mark of the beast, you know, whatever happens, you know, we 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 do have. If you're in Christ, we do have a, an eternal spiritual body inside our flesh suit and that will live on no matter what happens so if we happen to die we die in the lord if we live we live unto the lord um but i know that that those are some things that we don't want to think about we don't want to think about our own mortality we don't want to be concerned that somebody might knock on our door or what or we might be shuttled off into a smart city uh, or that's basically, you know, within an urban, you know, downtown area that's, you know, sectioned off or what have you, you know, like we don't want to think about that, uh, that the end times are at our door and we'll bust through that door uh, anytime. And also the IRS hiring 87,000 uh, people, you know, to not just push paper, but, but to actually, if you're not a friend of the new world order, you know, they'll find some trumped up charges against you to, you know, bust down your door, literally, you know, take you by force. I mean, they will, they will try to come up with, if you're not a friend of the new world order by your beliefs and, um, what have you, you know, they'll, they'll create some indictment against you and, you know, they, 
so I've heard so so many different theories like oh well you know some people say it'll be um another lockdown you know either either you lock down and, and you jab or job again or you know some people say that it's the IRS agents you know that will uh trump up some sort of charge against you and then if if you you know don't comply or whatever they'll just you know kick you out of your home and take all your stuff <clears throat> And, uh, you know, there's so many different end time scenarios, you know, and of course I, I hear about, you know, the, uh, the UFO disclosure, you know, alien stuff. And, uh, that definitely, um, is something that they are trying to drip feed, you know, humanity. you know, they're trying to get people ready, you know, for, uh, the alien disclosure. I mean, they, they have, uh, mentioned it several times, you know, in the media that, that the aliens are here and that, um, that they are going to invade earth or they're, they're going to, you know, that they basically are, um, leading people, uh, leading humanity into an evolution and what have you, you know? So I, it's interesting. I've heard different dreams of people, um, on YouTube and, and they, ha- and they don't know each other, but they've had rapture dreams. I don't know what you think about the rapture, but um, I believe in the rapture. So, so anyway, I, now I know that there's conjecture about you know when that'll take place. But it's interesting that that on YouTube there's been different people that have had dreams of an alien aircraft, a UFO, you know, appearing over major cities, and then the rapture happens. Um, so it's quite quite possible that. Uh, the rapture, you know, could happen. And then uh, right after that is when aliens appear or, or it's perhaps it could be simultaneous. So, so I think that, that the enemy has an, uh, he, he can't guess, you know, when the rapture will happen, you know, or he can't guess when Jesus will, will come back. Uh, But he can, he can, he can try to, you know, formulate, you know, a, a, some sort of, you know, guess on when that'll happen. So, so if, if, when, when that happens, I believe that either during or right before, uh, the, the rapture, the aliens will appear and, and the lie will go around that aliens have taken the less evolved. Uh, but anyway, but we, again, do not fear, even though, you know, these things will happen. It's just a matter of time. It, and um, I do envy some of the people that have gone on to be with the Lord. You know, they don't have to deal with, you know, these things that are happening around the corner. Um, I know that there's been some dear people that have you know gone on to be with the Lord um, that, like, for example, Russ Dizdar and um, uh, Joseph Doc Marquis, um, Chris Putnam, uh, there's different people, you know, have, um, that were very prominent, you know, in, in, uh, Christianity, you know, have, were fairly young, have gone on to be with the Lord. I know Doc Marquis had some health issues, but, but we, you know, we suspect, you know, perhaps Chris Putnam or, and perhaps Russ Dizdar might've been, you know, killed for their knowledge, um, killed for, you know, sharing the gospel and, and being red pilled and red pilling others and, you know, with, with their, you know, this expertise. Um, anyway, so even though it's very tempting to fear, uh, it's very, it's a lot of people are in fear mode, uh, in crisis mode. Uh, but, but don't fear, have faith in the Lord. Um, the analogy that comes to my mind or the story that comes to my mind in these end days is, is when, uh, Jesus and the disciples were on the water and there was storms the wind, you know, had rocked the boat and, and the, the seas were raging, you know, that they were on. And, um, of course, you know, they were like, Jesus, Jesus, you know, don't you even care about us? And he was of course sleeping. And so, you know, he, the reason why he was sleeping during the storm was because he knew that you know, he was the son of God, you know, and he, you know, that he, he is the son of God. He was the son of God and that, that he has power over the storm and over the weather. So just like he had power over the physical storm back then, he also has power over our storms and our trials and our tribulations. 
on a worldwide level as well as on a personal level. So anyhow, thank you once again for listening. I give you a clap and a shout out to you for listening this far. Uh, and I appreciate you very much. Um, please pray for us. And uh, I pray for you all. And God bless you. And have a blessed morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are at in the world. And I leave you with this cool song, Not Gonna Die by Skillet. Death surrounds my heart be slowing down. I won't take this world's abuse. I won't give up a refuse. This is how it feels when you're bent and broken. This is how it feels when your dignity is stolen. And everything you love is leaving. You hold on to what you believe in. The last thing I heard was you whispering goodbye. And then I heard you fly. No, not gonna die. Thank you.